I do want to get to making my beam engine, but before I really get into that, there's a few things I want to wrap up, a few tools I want to make uh, so that I have them on hand when I'm doing the engine. So two things I want to do to the lathe. Not major things, but this is the carriage lock. And I'd rather not have to reach for a tool to use that. So that's just a standard M8 Allen screw going into the clamp block. Clamp block. So I'm going to make a custom one with a little hand lever for that. So that's a piece of cake. First stage is just to turn the diameters of this piece of 304 stainless steel to suit. I'm using a CNMG 432 insert by Kenner Metal. This is a semi-finishing insert, does a really nice job on stainless steel, especially when running flood coolant. The part is being supported on a live center just to prevent undue deflection and keep the diameter consistent all the way down. We look at the pitch chart you'll see I do have to change the gears and we'll set up the we're at a 1.25 pitch for what we're doing so we'll go and select the appropriate change gears and get that going While I've got it in this state, I'm going to apply some lube. I use this CRC Extreme Duty, uh, which has been recommended. An easy way to set clearance between the meshed gears is just to jam a piece of folded over paper in the teeth. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. This just sets the correct amount of lash between the gears without a lot of messing around. The two outer gears are usually a 30 tooth and a 60 tooth gear. In order to run metric pitches, we have to swap these out and the top table here shows how to do that. So we're swapping the 30 tooth to a 20 tooth and the 60 tooth you already saw I swapped out to a 78 tooth, which has to now be engaged on the outer of the two center gears. Here I'm just using the screw from the carriage to get an approximate start point for the thread and using a sharpie to make it easy to see when I'm scratching the surface of the screw. Having started cutting the thread I can no longer disengage the half nut on the carriage so the tool is backed up to the start position each time uh, by simply reversing the machine and leaving the feed engaged. And this is necessary on metric threads because the having changed the gear train previously, the threading dial no longer applies.
I use a thread micrometer to check the pitch diameter of the screw thread before I disengage the half nut so that if I have to make another pass I can do that successfully. This parting tool is substantial and solid, but it's about an eighth of an inch in width. So I encountered some chatter here, I had to slow the machine right down. Did a really nice job of parting off this solid stainless steel rod though. and part reversed to clean up the back side. goes in there and this is the carriage lock so what I want to do now is find out where I have to drill the hole for the actuating bar I'm going to put it there so that when I tighten it up it comes around here and it's just going to be short and that way swing it around out of the way good enough using the spin indexer to hold the part steady and then just using an edge finder to find center of the part and the end of the part and then coming back to drill a through hole for the little tommy bar With the through hole drilled, I'm just milling a set of six flats on the part, as much for appearance as anything else, but then they're there in case I need a wrench when I'm using it live. Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, well, there's the finished item. So a few tribulations along the way. 
but I think this will do the job nicely. So let's have a look. So it's a little bit discoloured because I uh, I just welded in the back of the Tommy bar. I didn't show making that because that was just cut to length and rounded off with a file. And then I went and welded it in there. And the length of the Tommy bar is uh, just shy of this so it can't interfere with anything sliding along here. And I clocked it earlier on as you saw so that when it's locked the Tommy bar ends up here out of the way. Other nice thing on this machine is the uh, lock has been placed well out the way of the cross slide. There's no chance of anything getting in the way. So I'm happy with that, it looks nice. And I put the hex on it just for the sake of it in case I ever needed to get on it. But really, that's solid. I mean, yeah, you can drag it along if you really want to. Now that can live out the way. Result.